Welcome to Homemaking with Purpose. Well, no, this isn't Homemaking with Purpose. This is just a regular live stream. Actually, this is Prepping with Denise. So welcome to another episode of Prepping with Denise. But on this episode, I am showing you our catch. I went fishing with my husband and my sister and one of his buddies and their little granddaughter today. And we caught some big ones. And I thought, what a way to show you some of the things we are doing to prepare our freezers for the winter. And we got some good ones. But before I get into it, let me just remind you that this video was brought to you by Apron Diva. Pretty and practical. We believe that an apron can be a homemaker's best accessory. And like I said, we caught some big ones. Honey, come over here and pick them up so they can see them. So I'm going to try to get him to pick them up. So that you can singly, you can't pick them up all at once. Okay, like really so this is a catfish. Look at that tail. It looks like a mermaid. The thing is so big. But he'll get them cleaned and skinned and filleted and then they'll be processed for the freezer. And I'll show you what we'll probably use to do that with. But just hold it this way in front of the camera. So this is one of them. Look at that thing. Isn't it huge? Hold it up. There we go. So that's one. Put it in the sink and get the other one out. And we have more. Now, they're not all quite that large, but they are huge. So, Mimsy, look at this one. Now, this is another one that we've got. This is another catfish. You've got his face covered up. They can't see. Look at there. Okay, put that one in the sink. We had so much fun. And you can just kind of see I'm still styling. This was a hat I had on because, of course, it was nice and warm out. So you have to be protected from the sun. So I had on some sunblock and then this hat. This is the third one that we've got. Then we got a couple of smaller ones. And they're cats as well. Is that all of them? Oh, we got all cats today. One of the um, the little girl that was with us, she did catch a crappie. She caught a crappie, but we put that one back. But we just kept the cats today. So, so this is what we have today from today's cat. Okay, so you can put them all back in the bucket and take them out in the garage now. He's going to clean them and process them out in the garage. I am not showing that on camera. That would be way too nasty to do. I do have a video up though where I did show him cleaning fish and if you want to see that I'll link it above with an icon as well as in the description box below but we really had a good time he had music playing he's got like one of those little radios and we were able to play like Pandora and had all kind of really cool like music from the uh, 80s and 90s that kind of thing playing just kind of rocking out to that while we were catching fish So he's going to take those out to the garage. There's a, he has a table that he uses in the garage with the holes and all that that he cleans them up with. So. You're done with it, right? Yes, dear, I'm done with you. Okay. Well, we'll get this cleaned up. Sometimes I think that I am the bane of his existence. Up. Okay, we'll get this all cleaned up. So yes, weren't those fish pretty cool? Now let me get the iPad a little closer so I can see who's on and who's talking to them. Let's see. Oh, it's Mimsy. Hey, Melinda, how are you? And Rebecca Dallas. Oh, and let me get this hat off, too. That hat is hot. So, yeah, we really had a lot of fun, and those fish were absolutely huge. And, you know, we've been talking quite a bit about preparing your home, pre prepping your fridge, your freezer, your pantry. And one of the things that we're working on as well is preparing our freezer 
for um, the winter. So one of the ways that we do that is is hubby will go out and he'll fish. And then what he, uh, you guys are getting a little loud in there. So one of the things that he will do is he will catch and then process and put in the freezer. So when he puts them away for a longer period of time, we're probably gonna use something like this, either this Food Saver Mini or the one he likes best is this one. And it is my uh, Nesco Deluxe Vacuum Sealer. This is the one we had first. So he probably likes this one best because we had it first and that's the one he's used most often. All right, so Chris says that catfish is is uh, her favorite. She loves those. And Linda says, do you know how many servings those will make? Good food security. Hey, honey, how many servings will one of those fish make? Mm -hmm. Like how many people will one of those big fish feed? So if that biggest one will serve about six, then probably the next one down might serve five. So I'm guessing we probably got about 25 or 30 servings with those fish. Now, if it's a true situation where we have to really be concerned about food insecurity, we can always stretch those as well. So yeah, about 25 or 30 servings for all those fish. So I'm really excited about that. Yes, it really does help with food security, particularly when he can go out, catch it and bring it home. Sometimes they call it fishing for groceries. I thought that was kind of funny, but I guess it actually does make sense. Hey, Leanne, glad you're here. So Rebecca says catfish are delicious. Yes, they are. And what he will do, he will make fish fillet steaks. Sometimes he'll uh, cut them up and make like little catfish nuggets, catfish fillets, not sticks fillets with catfish steaks, catfish nuggets, and that kind of thing. And then he breads them and deep fries them. So I swear I'm married to the big fisherman of the Midwest. And actually on his apron, I've got his moniker, Big Fish, on there because that's what he has had on the side of his older boat. And then that's what his guys call him. They call him Big Fish. So, so there's that. Uh, Oh, thank you. Uh, and he, actually, this is my husband's hat. He's got about four or five different hats that he wears when he's fishing. And uh, well, more than that, like if he's wearing a baseball style cap, he's got at least 50 or 60 of those. But for the hats with the larger bibs to keep the sun off, you, we probably only got about five. And I just grabbed one of his for that. So yeah, those fish are huge and a true delicacy. So has anybody out there been fishing lately? Caught anything recently? Or what are you doing to prepare for your freezer? Tell me, inquiring minds want to know. So if it's a true grid down situation and the electricity or the power is out, you're probably going to want to go with things that are in the can. And I have been storing up some canned tuna and canned salmon and things like that. But not anticipating any emergencies like that. He's fishing and he's beginning to get those stored up for the winter. So a lot of times he'll give quite a bit of his catch away, but now it's, it's a point where he's starting to keep more of that. So Rebecca's been canning ground beef. And we've got great weather today. Today was probably about 75 degrees. It was a nice little breeze sitting out there by the pond. Just a beautiful day. And we took my sister, Mickey, with us. She's been wanting to go for the longest, so we took her there. So it's been a beautiful day. And he said this is probably one of the last nice days we're going to have for a while. Hey, Sandra, at a beautiful nest. She said she loves fish. What type of fish did your husband catch? Um, they were catfish. They were catfish. Oh, you missed him. He's already taken them back outside. But we had one that was like this big. And then um, they went down in size. We probably threw back about five or six because he said those still needed to be in the nursery. But um, they were huge. And so we probably got about 25, 30 servings out of those fish that he caught. Oh, Sue, thank you. Sue says that she enjoyed watching my granddaughter on TV last week. Yes, my granddaughter is on 
the ABC show, The Wonder Years. And last week she played the part of the younger big sister. So it was like a flashback. And the, when the big sister was about 11 or 12, my granddaughter Mackenzie played that part. So it was really kind of neat. And I was talking to Mackenzie today and um, I FaceTimed her. And one of the things that she said was she did an audition today. And I'm like, you did an audition on a Sunday? And she says, well, you don't go to auditions anymore. You record the auditions and you send in the tape. So she did an audition today. So who knows? Who knows? But she was so excited to have her first speaking part. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. So Linda says she's been canning ground beef and chicken thighs to get ready for the, for the winter. That's a good idea, too. You know, Linda, I've been wanting to learn to do pressure canning where I can can meats and things like that. But... So far, I have not. I can only do water bath canning. So jams and jellies and high acid foods like tomatoes and tomato sauce and things like that. So maybe next year I'll learn how to do that. So yes, Sandra, please watch the replay of The Wonder Years. And her mother, uh, actually that show was a family affair because my daughter-in-law, Mackenzie's mother, is also in the show. She was in the first and the third episodes and she plays the part of the mother's best friend. So she doesn't talk a lot just yet, but she's there. And then my son is the assistant art director on the set. So he does a lot of the set design and like the magazine decor and all that kind of stuff. So it's really kind of cool for the family. Oh, Mimsy, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, she was the little girl, so that was nice. So Rebecca says she's been trying to prep her pantry because uh, in case they lose power so she doesn't lose everything in the freezer. And see, that's the thing. We've got a generator. So one year when we had these huge ice storms all over Indiana and the power was out and we did lose power, my husband was able to connect the freezer to a generator so we didn't lose food there. And we were able to hook up like a lamp and a light, that a lamp to, to, to give us light in one room. So that was kind of nice. Um... Oh, so Kat wants to know where we went fishing. She lives in Washington State. Well, I'm in Indiana, and we went fishing at a private pond. My husband has a couple of friends who have ponds, and so we went to a private pond because we wanted to take my sister, and she's disabled, so we need to have it where it was pretty accessible. And then his buddy came along also and brought his granddaughter, so we had a lot of fun. And the interesting thing is his friend, um, not a lot of people fish in that pond, so it took us a while, but we had a good time and we caught a pretty nice little catch. Thank you, Sandra. I appreciate that. Oh, Rebecca, you just learned how to pressure can last week. You know what? Linda Sutton on Sutton's Days talks about pressure canning all the time. I think I'm going to try to check her out. And you know who else does is Khadija at um, her healthy home. She knows how to pressure can too. So I'll have to get one of those. Uh, pressure canners, and then maybe I can get them to help me figure that out. Now, my daughter-in-law is the friend of the mother. So um, on the first one, uh, she was on the bleacher. I think maybe one of her children on the show is like one of the little baseball boys. And then on the third show at the party, she was one of the ones dancing. I don't know. She said, made some comment to the mother of the show. But yeah. So Rebecca said that you needed, you told your husband you needed a generator for your CPAP, but maybe freezers could hook up too. Yeah, you probably do. We have the free, the generator for our freezer and um, our refrigerator and one light. So we just kind of bundled up with blankets and that kind of thing. So Kim says she wants to learn how to can meat to check out. Oh, Homestead Heart. That's right. Homestead Heart. And I just love Mrs. Hart. She is just the sweetest person. That's a good idea. I got to buy the Big Bertha, as she calls it. I need to buy a canner. So I need to do that. Oh, you saw the names. Charity. It's Charity and Mackenzie. My daughter's Mackenzie and my son is Justin. Mackenzie Jordan, Justin Jordan, and... Um, Charity Jordan. Hey, Kelsey, your first live and you're from Australia. Well, you know, Kelsey, um, Kelsey, I'm sorry. 
my husband brought the fish in and showed them all. Honey, you wouldn't be willing to show them again, would you? Yeah, somebody from Australia just jumped on. They missed it earlier. You wouldn't be willing to show the fish again, would you? What was that? Can you show the two biggest ones? He'll go and get the two biggest ones. Okay. Yes. Oh, Kim, I'm glad you think so. So it was a cute comment about the daughter thinking she was grown. She loved it. You know what? I tell you what, watching the Wonder Years, it's like being back in school myself because that's how life was like for us growing up. Uh, I could, the parents and the whole nine yards. Okay, people, I'm back in. Let me get the Just for her. Just for you. He brought the bucket back in. So this is the biggest catfish right here. Look at the size of that head. And then look how long it is. I think I'll bring it this yeah, way. Right in the middle of the camera. There we go. Okay. And show the tail. It's almost like a mermaid. It's so doggone big. And then, May May, do you like catfish? I see you're on from Texas there, so. He's going to get out one of the other ones for us. Yeah, they are huge. These are the smaller ones. So he said that's it. I washed off the sink where the fish were. No, I'm just, you wipe your hands on it. I'm just letting you know with a dirty cloth. He said his hands are dirty, so he's okay. So Rebecca says, her mom and her husband bought her a pressure canner the day before yesterday, so she's waiting for it to arrive. And right now you're borrowing one from your friends. Okay, I get it. I need to get one of those. And so May May is joining us from Texas. She said, wow, once you saw the size of those fish. And uh, Sandra says, those are big fish. Yes, they are. And uh, like I said, we'll be having quite a few meals with those. And typically, whenever the kids come home, he does a big fish fry for them as well. Yeah, I'm always talking about him going fishing and catching fish, but I never really show the fish like the day we got back. And then, oh, I had my little hat on for those of you that missed it. This was the hat that I had on to shade me from the sun. So I was really doing pretty good. I have been working in my preps, is what I had been doing because I was supposed to work in them yesterday. I'm trying to reorganize my shelving, or I should say my shelves. And I got it started today. And then um, we had promised to take my sister fishing today. So I stopped what I was doing. And then, you know, we packed up the car and took her. And I'm so glad I went. Oh, let's see. Oh, Rebecca said she loves her apron. Which one did you get, Rebecca? And thank you. Um, hmm. Hey, guys, I got a question for you. Have, have you ever, Will, have you ever heard of fish being frozen in milk? No. No? No, okay. I know people soak it in milk. Soak it in milk to do what? No, no, she, she wanted to know if we ever freeze them in milk. So the question is, do you use your food saver before you freeze the fish? And do you freeze them in milk? So as far as the food saver, which I have my food saver here, or I will use my Nesco Deluxe Vacuum Sealer. And this is the one we use the most, is the Nesco. Um, we did not use that until... He had gone on a fishing trip, you know, it was, they, he goes every week to some big fishing trip and they stay for a week. And um, one of the guys up there had one and he liked what he saw. So when he came home, he told me about it. So we got one and we use it all the time to process the fish. So what we will do is once he gets the fish cleaned and processed and whatever needs to happen is done, 
then we'll put them in the freezer bags and then freeze them with the food saver. And then that's for long-term purposes. If he's going to just put them in the bag for about a month or so, planning to eat them before uh, too long, then we'll just use like plain old glad freezer bags, that kind of thing. And he said he had not heard of freezing them in milk. They'll soak them in milk prior to breading before cooking, but they had not heard about them being uh, frozen in milk. Okay, Kelsey, you know what? I would love to ship internationally, but the problem with that is just that the shipping costs are just so high. If it's going to cost you $20, $30 to ship and the product itself is $20 or $30, it's really not worth your while. So that's why. Red and white. Okay, I wonder which one you've got. Hmm. Okay, and Mimsy says to tell Charity and McKenzie how impressive they are. I will. I will. I'm glad. So, um, and that Kim asks, do I, okay, going to ask you guys to quiet down just a little bit. So, um, Kim asked, um, do I own and design the Apers on Oprah Diva? I don't do my own design. I have vendors and suppliers that I purchase from. So I try to get things ordered in. And right now, shipping has been an issue. So my orders have my orders have, for my suppliers have been coming in slowly. You got a red and white one. You don't remember the name of it. I wonder if you got the crystal. If the crystal was the one with the truck on it. And then there was a red and white one that was the Jilly. And that was the first one I had. We sold out of that one very quick and I couldn't get any more of that one in. Okay. But I'm glad you like it. Well, I think I've answered all of the questions that people had. So do you guys have any quick questions for me? I don't want to keep you on because you guys know I don't do live streams to just say, well, what do you want to talk about or, you know, that kind of thing. I usually have a purpose when I come on. And the purpose today was to share our catch of the day. So do you guys have any questions that I need answered? And if so, I, and if not, I will let you guys go. Hey, Cal, it's good to see you, girl. You missed those huge fish my husband caught, but can't bring them out again. There's no way that's going to happen. Oh, you said it was the red and white one. That was probably the jilly. Yeah, that was a jilly. And you know what? I ordered in 24 of those um, to let you guys know a little bit. them in in small batches like i'll order maybe six maybe eight sometimes ten if i think they'll really go well but i don't order a whole big bunch because you know i don't want to hold too much inventory if i don't have to i ordered 24 of those and they sold in like less than three weeks i sold all 24 of them probably the first week i probably sold half of them so um yeah that one was a really a good seller hey wendy yeah you missed those aprons so um, you want an apron, what's my website? My website is aprondiva.com. And I would love it for you to come on over and uh, pick something up. Would just love it. Yeah, and let's see. Kelsey said she's recently from my channel. Oh, thank you. You've been been watching as you do housework. Well, good. I've got a video coming out tomorrow where I'm resetting my kitchen and then I'm actually cooking and I'm making chicken and dumplings. Somebody asked me to do that. So I made it for dinner and it's part of that video. But then I'm going to do another video where I just work on the chicken and dumplings tutorial by itself. So you'll see me do that twice, but not soon. Uh, but thank you. Yeah, it was the jilly. That was it. Yeah, the jilly. Okay. Anything else you guys have a question about? So um, one of the things, though, that I have been doing as I've been shopping this week and looking at my comments is taking note of what people are finding in short supply, where and what kind of things that they are um, 
find it on short supply. So I'll be coming out with a video within the next few days where I talk about that. I'm trying to do something related to prepping on Saturdays or Sundays. And if I have more to share on that topic, I will. But it's just something I want you guys to keep in the forefront of your minds and be thinking about. Oh, Mimsy found an apron in her garage today. She bought it before her wedding. Well, girl, get it out and wear it. Doesn't matter. Get it out and wear it. How much did the fish weigh? Oh, shoot. Well, that one, biggest one probably weighed. It looked to me like it was at least five pounds, if not six. The, the one under that one was probably at least four pounds. And then we had a couple that were like three and two. So, yeah, we had some pretty good poundage there. We had some good poundage there. Do I still put chili sauce in my mac and cheese? Oh, yeah. I have a dollop of Heinz chili sauce goes in mac and cheese and so many other things. It just adds a lot of good flavor. Just not the heat, but flavor. 45 years ago. Hey, I, I heard that. Oh. So Rebecca says, what is my biggest go-to for cleaning when I'm feeling overwhelmed? So if when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I just go back to my routines. I say, okay, what's the what, start with the routines and go from there. So my daily swish and swipe, get that done. And then I'll reset the kitchen if that needs to be done. So I get the daily swish and swipe done and then I start with the kitchen. Or I might start with the kitchen and then do the daily swish and swipe. But typically I'll do the swish and swipe first and then hit the kitchen. But going back to your routines is the biggest thing that's helpful when you're feeling overwhelmed because it just helps you just to kind of focus on whatever that one thing is at that time. Oh, Blue Skies is on. Yeah, it was the jilly. It was the jilly that sold out. That's what she had. And, you know, Blue Skies went fishing with us today. And... Um, she caught one of those big ones and she was like, you would have thought she was like, what's his name? Captain Ahab and Moby Dick, the way she was like swaying back and forth and she had the pole going and all that. She was reeling it in and then we had to get the net to get it in. So Kim says she's been stocking up but have not seen a shortage in her area. And that's really good. When I say shortage, what I mean is just holes on the grocery store shelf. It doesn't mean that you can't find food. If you can't find it at Kroger, you can find it at Walmart. I was at Walmart yesterday and the lady in front of me was buying baby food. So I just asked, have you found an issue with baby food on the shelves? And she says she's, she keeps her grandchild every Monday and she's been having trouble finding the baby food at Kroger and she was buying the little small jars the one the pureed food not the little toddler food meals yet but the one for the babies when they first get started and she said it was 85 cents a jar which she felt was the price was going up on that so there was that okay blue sky said fishing today was so much fun and she says she also sees so many shortages here in our city. Yeah, our Walmart shelves have plenty of holes. And I took some pictures. I tell you what, I've seen enough holes at all the stores. And when I went to Walmart yesterday, I just quit taking pictures. I just didn't see the point because they're just holes on the shelves. Now, if I need to buy anything, I can sub it out for something else without any trouble. But um, there was that. So Susie said Walmart had lots of empty spaces today and the meat prices are outrageous. Oh my goodness, meat prices are outrageous. I made a soup with beef, chuck roast, you know, chuck roast and uh, mushrooms and uh, pumpkin. The beef was like $6.99 a pound for chuck roast. It was ridiculous. So Kim agrees prices are going up. So Rebecca says she's on the struggle bus. I get it. I get it. We are. So, you know, and sometimes I feel like Cassandra because I feel like people aren't taking this seriously. That's why I try to encourage people more and more to take it seriously and to consider starting with a one week food supply and then a two week and then a four week and then a six week and then a three month food supply 
just in case of emergencies, one of the ladies said yesterday in one of the comments that um, her friend had been prepping and then had a car accident and then couldn't work for weeks. And so the food that she had prepped and had already had in the home was such a godsend. So think about that. Girl, yes, it's still in my dining room. And I was in there today working on it and I stopped the work to go fishing. So I will finish it probably tomorrow or the day after. And I am filming that. And on that video is when I made the chuck roast soup and then the uh, organizing the prep shelves will be the other part of the video. So, so yeah, you'll get to see that. Oh, Carmen Bugs, new from California. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Natasha says stock up. Yes. Oh, and now I'm like, oh, look at her name. Holiday. Natasha Holiday. I was going to say stock up for the holidays. And then I saw her name. But here's the thing. I was watching uh, something on my iPad today. And my husband came in and said, listen, you need to see, hear this news. And he turned on the TV and turned the news on. And they were talking about the supply the distribution and the interruption of the supply lines and why things are in short supply and blah, 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 blah. But in a nutshell, they said, if it's not on the shelves, by, if it's not in the warehouse in September, it probably won't be on the shelf in December. So what they suggested was if you're going to be buying things for Hanukkah and for Christmas, you need to buy those things now. Because probably what's on the shelf and what's already in their warehouse is all that's going to be there in regards to Christmas gifts and those kinds of things. So start getting those things done now. So then in Australia, the shortages aren't bad, but they think the situation in America, Australia will be affected soon. Yeah, and it's because of, you know, those barges, they said those ships are out there in the middle of the ocean. They can't get to shore. They can't get the supplies unloaded. And then on top of that, there's a shortage of truck drivers to get things from point A to point B to point C. So yeah. You know what, Wendy? I'm not surprised. And you know, when um, Kay from the Organized Soprano was on and, and someone mentioned that they were prepping and I said, well, they're probably prepping for like three to six months. And she was like three to six months. Then she gave some suggestions, but I kind of thought maybe she had not heard about the need to prepare. So yeah, it, it can be a problem. So a lot of people aren't doing it. And you know what, Mimsy, I need to go to. I've got a couple of things that I need to do tonight, too. So I want to thank you guys for jumping on with me. I did not intend to keep you guys on very long. I just wanted to show off our big fish that we caught today. And they were huge. And I do want to invite you guys to check out my video tomorrow where I show you how to make chicken and dumplings. And I do a little bit of cleaning. And you can meet one of my new little sisters, Sarah Pleasantly. Her, well, Sarah Pleasant. And her YouTube channel was called Pleasantly Sarah. And I hope you guys like these little prepping notes or prepping videos that I've been doing. I really didn't intend to do this, but I just felt like there was a need. So I'm trying to bring more and more little prepping news stories just from time to time. So in the meantime, this is Denise Jordan saying, you're not done yet. Click on the link in the description box below once I put it in there because there's nothing down there just yet and check out another one of my prepping with Denise stories or my homemaking stories and I'll see you guys next time bye gotta help the hubby get those fish situated so talk to you guys soon bye